Okay, so picking up right where we left off in this exercise, we went through, we performed the test on the equality across these multiple population proportions, where we're looking at the proportion of voters who changed their voting intentions, intentions within four weeks of the election. We found that we had evidence to reject that not all proportions were equal. So that's the proportion of those who voted conservative, those who voted liberal, and for other political parties. So because we rejected, that is what makes it appropriate to now use this Marisquillo procedure to determine where the difference exists. If we did not reject the null hypotheses, then there's no reason it would not be appropriate to use this method because if we don't reject, then why would we look for a difference if we have already found that none exist? Because we rejected, we found that there is a difference, that at least one of them is different. So now we're going to look for where that one is. So how do we do this? Well, this procedure is relatively straightforward in the sense that now we're going to be looking at different pairs. So we'll look at all possible pairs. So here I have these three different groups. So I'm going to compare conservatives to liberals, conservatives to other, and then liberals to other. So we put together all possible pairs, and now we look at them two at a time to find out where a difference exists. If we had more than three, if I had four, five, six, seven, ten, well, you can imagine, of course, the number of pairs grows significantly. And so it does become a fairly tedious process to do it by hand. If you're doing this using software, then certainly it would be much faster. We're doing it by hand. So I do keep it to just three categories because it does make everything much simpler for us. So let's just get into it. I'll just see if I can fit it in down here. So we're going to be comparing all possible pairs, which for us is to compare conservatives and liberals. Are they the same? Yes or no? We will also compare conservatives to those who voted for others. Are they the same? Yes or no? And finally, our last pair is to look at those who voted liberals and other. Are they the same? Yes or no? So we've got all possible pairs from our three categories. Now, this procedure has a test statistic and it has a critical value. The test statistic is just the absolute value of the point estimate of the difference between our, our sample proportions. So I need our sample proportion of those who voted conservatives, those who voted liberals, and those who voted other. So, if we come up to our, our observed frequencies, let me just clear this out a little bit. All I need here is to say, okay, well, out of the 194 that we surveyed, 96 of those said yes. So 96 out of 194 is, oops, 96 out of 194. So that gives me a point estimate of that proportion is 0.495. So there's my, my sample proportion of the, the proportion of conservatives who changed um, their voting intentions. We do the same for the liberals. So 82 out of 161, 82 out of 161. Here I have point 509 and other 87 out of 136 is 0.64. I'm just rounding up a little. Okay, so there's our three point estimates that we're going to need for our three tests. Our critical value, this one's a little bit more tedious the critical value for each test. So I'm putting IJ on there because we're comparing all of these different pairs. 
This is equal to the square root of the relevant chi-squared value at alpha, not alpha divided by 2. I know that's confusing. Here it looks like we're doing two-tail tests. That's not how this works. We're using alpha just on its own. So we'll use the same level of significance that we used for our test. We'll use alpha uh, here is 0.1. And we'll use that for each of our tests, uh, comparing the different pairs. So this is that critical chi-squared for alpha. So it's the same critical value from our test. The square root of that multiplied by, and here's where it gets a little bit tedious, p bar i times 1 minus p bar i over that sample size. And this is p bar j, 1 minus p bar j over that sample size. So again, for each of our pairs, we're going to have a different critical value because those sample proportions are all, are all different. So let's go ahead and calculate our test statistics. So we'll start off with these values here. So comparing conservatives and liberals, that's 0.495 minus 0.509. So that gives me here a test statistic 0.014. I do the same now comparing conservatives, 0.495 and other, 0.64. And that gives me a value here of 0.15. And then liberals and other, 0.509 minus 0.64. That gives me a value 0.15. And again, absolute value. I'm ignoring the negative sign that is coming up. Okay, now for our critical values. These are a little bit tedious. That chi-square. So that's chi-square. We still are working with two degrees of freedom. Same degrees of freedom as from our test. Two degrees of freedom. Alpha was 0.1. So if I come down to our chi-square distribution... Here we have two degrees of freedom, and there's 0.1. There's our critical value here, 4.605. So that will be the same for all of the tests. So that's going to give me 4.605. That will be the same for all three tests. But what's going to be different, of course, is this next part. So this next part, now I'm looking at the sample proportions for each of those groups. So let's first we'll start with conservative, 0.495. So this is going to be 495, 1 minus 495, divided by that sample size, which was 194. Plus, well, in this test, I'm comparing conservatives and liberals. So now I need to come up back to my observed data. And we're comparing conservatives here and liberals. So 0 0.509 is my next one. So 0 0.509, 1 minus 0 0.509, and that sample size was 161. So going through this calculation, I have a critical value here of 0 0.11. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. The next one, same chi-squared. I'm still looking at conservative, but now I'm looking at the other. So the first part of this calculation is going to be exactly the same as that one. So let's just go through that. 0.495, 1 minus, oops, 1 minus, divided by 194. But now this second part, now I have to bring in that other group. And so here, now I want this value, the 0.64, and that sample size of 136. So this is 0.64, 1 minus, divided by that sample size, 136. And this gives a critical value here of 0.12. And the next one, 
So now I'm looking at liberals and other. So that's going to be the same as this. Here's the liberals and here's the other. So I can just copy this. over 161 and here 0.64 over 136 and that gives us also with a little rounding a little rounding error in here is fine that gives us a critical value of 0.12 as well very close to the previous calculation so what is our rejection rule well very straightforward we reject if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value. So here I'm comparing 0.014 to 0.11. Well, certainly that critical value is greater than our test statistic. So we are unable to reject that null hypothesis. So here our evidence supports that the proportion of conservatives who changed their voting intention within four weeks is not statistically different from the proportion of those who voted liberals who changed their intention within four weeks. Finally here I can say yes that one is larger. I'm going to reject. This one also is larger. I'm going to reject. And so in these two, I have evidence to show that the proportion of voters who voted for another political party, the proportion of those voters who changed their voting intention within the last four weeks up to the election is different from the um, corresponding proportion for those who voted conservatives and liberals. So. Among our three groups that we were initially looking at, those who voted conservatives, liberals, and for another political party, well, what we have found now in all of this analysis, the first test was that we identified that yes, not all of them are equal. At least one of those groups had a different proportion of voters who changed their voting intentions. We then went through the Marasquillo procedure we found that we are unable to show any difference in the proportion of those who voted conservatives or liberals who had changed their voting intentions, but we did find evidence to show that those who voted for another political party, the proportion of those people who changed their voting intentions within four weeks leading up to the election is different from both the proportion who voted conservative and liberal. Okay. That's it. That's our full, complete problem. My goodness, these are tedious, I know. But hopefully they make sense. And if we go through, you know, like this step by step, and you go through these a few times, you'll get some good practice. And hopefully you'll get a lot more confident in going through these calculations. So we'll do one more problem. We'll probably go through it a little bit quicker because it will be our third exercise. And hopefully you'll follow along and you'll get it, everything that we're doing. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.